Hello, my name is Andrew Hoffner, and I'm putting this video together in order to share with you my creative process as a maker of immersive work. This video relates specifically to the building that we're in, my first long-term venue, Gymnopedi, and it also relates to the first show that I'm going to stage here in 2019, a new show called Bottom of the Ocean. I've been making what sometimes is termed immersive or interactive or experiential work for the last four years. In 2014 and 15, I made a show in which guests roam through a dream called Houseworld. In 2016 and 17, I co-created a show with Melinda Lau called Whisper Lodge, a live in-person experience of ASMR. I also did a bunch of one-offs. I made performance installations at an electronic music festival, an immersive concert for Ars Nova's Ant Fest, a ritual wedding, and an immersive dinner gala at Foss Fest. And in building all of these experiences, I noticed a common logistical need of the form, or at least a common need of the particular work that I was creating within it. I couldn't stop thinking about the length of time we were spending in these venues. It was always too short. For certain shows, we were renting an Airbnb for a long weekend. For others, we were on site for a total of 48 hours, 24, sometimes only eight hours. And this was resulting in a lot of limitations. It's hard to build a decent set if you're only there for a day. Uh, Short-term venues often come with extra rules. Maybe you're not allowed to put anything in the walls because you're giving the venue back the next morning. When time is scarce, it's also difficult to rehearse and edit. Uh, often in immersive work, we can't see how the show truly operates until there's an audience in here with us. A common scenario is we end up engulfed in a marathon weekend where we're trying to perform as much as possible and get as many participants through these small intimate shows so that we can maybe break even maybe lose $300 instead of $2,000. Let's think about one way that uh, finances of an immersive production are directly affected by a short stay in a venue. If I'm in this set all year, by the end of 2019, it's starting to pay off. But if I have to take all this down at the end of this weekend, chances are I'm having an expensive weekend. And so the quality of our show and our budget are both really suffering because of these short stays in these venues. We're in Bushwick, Brooklyn, in the basement of a large church property. A lot could go wrong over the next 31 months, but my intention is to fill this space with immersive performances from now through the end of 2021. We've got 3,000 square feet, plus room to expand if we need it. One of the most valuable resources over the course of my life, and especially in this field of immersive, has been the often untapped potential of church properties. Many churches are unused for most of the week, and a lot of them are old and unique and beautiful. A lot of churches have that branch of their property with the social hall and Sunday school, and I find parsonages and rectories and convents to be some of the most incredible interiors around. If you go about your work respecting the church communities who are there before you and respecting the neighborhood that you're working in, you might be able to strike up a deal beneficial to both sides that allows you to put on some performances in a space like this. This particular church property had a gym and a locker room that were in bad shape. They'd been ignoring them since some water damage happened in the 1970s. Using my time and money, 
I'm remediating the space in exchange for the church allowing me to be this corner of their property's sole occupant for the next three years. It's an expensive project, but the price is actually similar to what it costs to rent Houseworld for four months in 2015. This space is a much better deal, and given the cost of square footage in New York City, it's kind of an unheard of deal. I'm hoping to cover the cost of my immersive performance, which I don't expect to be very profitable, by renting this space out while it's unused during the week for film and photo shoots, for meetings, for rehearsals, for private events. I'm going to use websites like PeerSpace, Splacer, and SpaceFinder. This is my first plunge into the world of venue rental and venue sharing, so I have no idea what's going to happen, but I think it's worth a shot. I'm going to spend a moment talking about how I found this space. It's an old-fashioned church. Many of them are. These folks do most of their business in person. In the summer of 2015, after the Houseworld Kickstarter campaign, I chose the neighborhoods that seemed affordable for my budget, but also weren't so far that Manhattan audiences would skip the show. Then I Google mapped all the churches in those neighborhoods, and I would spend a chunk of my free time walking from church to church, placing these flyers in the fences and in the doors and the mailboxes. The majority of those dozens of churches that seemed to have potential ignored my flyers, but the church we're in right now called me back. And the funny thing was in 2015, the guy who showed me around this property skipped the gym and skipped this locker room that we're in right now. Maybe he felt that it was so wrecked that it was unusable. It wasn't until August of 2018, last year, that I luckily circled back around and stumbled across the perfect undiscovered corner in which to build my show. And so this venue search story maybe leads us to an artistic principle that we could describe as do the things that no one else would bother doing. If you're looking to stand out in your field, or if you're looking for affordable solutions in an expensive field, maybe your best bet is to Google map a bunch of churches and walk from church to church handing out flyers. Maybe your best bet is offering to renovate someone's dejected basement in exchange for putting on performances in that space. By following these unorthodox paths, we might be led to disproportionate opportunities that are missed by the people who are following the more conventional rules of, in this case, theater. You may be noticing that my situation is somewhat specific to big cities, and especially New York City. The benefits of being based in New York that I notice the most are we get the chance to work with the numerous other wonderful creative people who live around here. We have access to a larger than usual audience that's interested in immersive work. And there's a lot of press nearby that can publicize our shows. A big disadvantage of New York City is that square footage here is extremely expensive compared to other cities in the United States. This venue is my attempt to work around New York City's space problem. In your city or region, you may have a different problem, not enough collaborators or audience or press. You might need to find a different type of workaround. A final element of my artistic process this year that I'd like to share with you is a maintaining of a normal-ish life. I've reached some artistic goals in the past by turning my life upside down, and often I've had a great time doing that, but I don't believe that kind of wild chaos always has to happen. While building this venue and this show, I've kept working, teaching all my piano lessons and playing my Saturday and Sunday church services, which maintains my full income and allows me to pay for these renovations. 
I've been able to spend what's hopefully a healthy amount of time with my girlfriend and friends. I usually am able to eat pretty well and get eight hours of sleep a night. And this hasn't always happened. And that includes my approach to house world, which would not have been sustainable for the long term. There may come a tipping point when I have to accelerate my pace here. But for the past many months, my rate of work has been more like that of a walk or sometimes a jog. And this has kept me in a place of strength. If and when a tipping point comes for bottom of the ocean, I'll be handling it from that place of strength. Maybe a slower artistic pace and maintaining a sense of normalcy in your life could put you in a similar position. I don't know if what I build here is going to turn out. Ultimately, even under the best circumstances, I still need to make a good show. But I feel like I have a uniquely strong chance to do it at this venue. Because I have three years, I even have long enough to fail a few times before getting it right. Wish me luck, and I hope you'll come see what happens here at Gymnopedi, and I hope you come pay a visit to Bottom of the Ocean. <laughs>